Yo. I am Hellhound, and I uh, figured I would do a quick movie review tonight. Um, one of my earliest videos that I made um, from this channel, um, on this you know particular review show or whatever, um, was uh, I did a review of the movie Reanimator from 1985, and directed by Stuart Gordon. Um, I love this movie, it's one of my favorites, and uh, you know it really pisses me off? Um, not too long ago I did a top 10 favorite horror films video, and um, <laughs> I totally left this one out, I, it completely slipped my mind. And the thing is, the problem was, people were, a lot of people were begging me to make a top 10 horror films video, a lot of people were, like, asking for it, and I just kind of wanted to hurry up and get it done, so I just kind of threw it together, and didn't put, like, as much thought into it as I should have, and this movie definitely should have been on there. Um, also, an American Werewolf in London should have been on there too. I think I should have chose this and uh, American Werewolf in London instead of some of the you know a couple of other movies I put on there. But uh, oh well, and what's those? It's still a good list, I think. I just thought it was like a bit generic, and I think it'd have been more like interesting like with this movie and American Werewolf in London. But anyway, now you know this is probably in my top five or definitely top ten at the very least. Um, I love Reanimator; it's excellent. Um, but yeah, I already reviewed this movie. It was one of my first videos, as I said. So check it out if you haven't already. Um, check out my video when I. To talk about this great film, um, one of my favorites. Very, very fun, very entertaining movie, very gory, uh, very funny. Um, it's excellent. Um, so I already reviewed that. So if you were to go ahead and take a look at the sequel, Bride of Reanimator. Um, this movie came out a few years later. Uh, 89, I believe, or, or maybe 88. Uh, pretty sure it's 89, but uh, don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, great, great follow-up. Uh, very good sequel. Uh, not quite as good as the original, not quite up to par, but still very, very good. And I definitely recommend this for fans of the first movie. Um, surprisingly, I've noticed there's a lot of horror fans I know that have seen the original Reanimator and like haven't checked this one out yet. So um, I, I, I definitely, I highly recommend, I highly suggest that you go do that. Um, see this movie, do whatever it takes, because it is excellent. Um, it's a great sequel. Uh, anyway, yeah, we have um, Dr. Herbert West, um, played again by Jeffrey Combs, returning from the first movie, um, along with Dan Kane, played by Bruce Abbott, also returning from the first movie. And, uh, yeah, see our review of that for more uh, details of the first film. Um, and now, instead of just bringing the dead back to life, now they're experimenting with creating life. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, instead of just injecting a corpse with their, uh, reagent, you know, seen here, that glowing green, uh, liquid, uh, that Dr. Uh, West invented, um, they're actually stitching together, um, uh, new, um, creations from, uh, cadavers, like, from different parts, so it's kind of like, more like the Frankenstein story, this one has more in common with the Frankenstein story, uh, than the first one does. Um, so yeah, they're like stitching together, you know, all these, uh, these limbs and stuff from, from, from dead people. Um, and even create like some of their own like unique creatures. Like there's like an eyeball, um, an eyeball, little, little eyeball <laughs> creature with like fingers for legs. And there's like a, an arm like attached to another arm and like a, a dog with a human hand instead of a paw and all these fascinating, grotesque, uh, abominations that they've brought to life with their reagent by, you know, stitching together different parts. Um, like some, yeah, as I said, some are combined with animals and humans. And, but basically their main goal, um, especially from Dr. Um, from Dan Kane, he wants to bring back Megan Halsey, his girlfriend from the first movie, um, who died at the end, played by Barbara Crampton, he wants to bring her back, and they have her heart, and so what they plan to do is take the le I think, I believe it was the legs of a prostitute, um, or maybe, or maybe the feet of a dancer, and then there's this other girl that, that Dan kind of has a crush on that dies, like, um, what, what, during, you know, in the, in the hospital under his care, um, and, like, they use most, I think they use most of her body parts, her face and her head and everything, and, um, but, like, yeah, all these different parts from, like, different bodies, different deceased women, and they're trying to build a perfect bride for Dan, you know, that's the, the bride of the reanimator. Um, yeah, date, mate, and reanimate. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that, that's the, uh, that's the essential goal, that's the essential plot. Um, uh, but if you remember the first film, the villain who tried to steal the reagent from, um, from... Herbert West, who was kind of like something of a failed scientist and like professor at the uh, university that they worked at, the Miskatonic University during the Miskatonic Massacre, um, Dr. Carl Hill, um, played by Ed Gale, who looks just like John Kerry, um, <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, the late Ed Gale, he was awesome. I really liked him, um, especially in these movies. Or no, sorry, David Gale. His name's David Gale. Where, where did I get Ed Gale from? Yeah, David Gale plays Dr. Carl Hill. In the first movie, um, West was forced to kill him when he was trying to steal his idea. Uh, the thing is, Dr. Carl Hill like ripped off like from other scientists, and like he's pretty much been getting by on like stealing from others, and that's what he plans to do with Dr. West. So <laughs> Herbert, who's one of my favorite horror protagonists of all time, he's just freaking cool. Jeffrey Combs rules. He's right up there with Bruce Campbell's uh, Ash Williams is one of the most memorable horror um, good guys, I guess you could say, even though he's kind of more of an anti-hero. Anyway, he was forced to kill Dr. Hill and decapitate him, so he cut his head off so and, and brought him back to life. So the rest of the movie, Dr. Hill was just a body carrying his severed head around, um, but his body was destroyed at the end of the last one. So that's this one, he's just reduced to just a head. He's just a severed head, and that's it. And uh, he has a lot of really funny scenes, really memorable lines. Um, he teams up with another scientist who becomes his henchman to do his bidding, and he's still the main villain, just like the first film. And so, yeah, so um, Herbert West and Dan Kane have to team up, trying to trying to put together all these new creations, all bring this new life, um, trying to uh, give Dan a bride made from, you know, the heart of his girlfriend and other various parts. And, uh, and also trying to, um, and also being pursued by the vengeful, um, Dr. Hill, <laughs> Carl Hill, who's just a, who, as I said, is just a head. And, um, I hate to spoil this, um, so I guess minor spoiler alert, but I have to mention it. At the very end of the movie, da uh, Dr. Hill gets bat wings grafted onto his head, so he's like, it's like a severed head flying around with bat wings, and, uh, yeah, he gets his wings. I mean, how cool is that? And I thought that was just a really cool addition. That was really awesome, so. Yeah, this movie's highly entertaining. It's had a lot of really interesting, uh, um, you know, creations that, uh, Dr. West and Dr. Kane created from, you know, various parts and stuff. I thought that was kind of a, a good direction to take it in. You know, it's loosely, you know, Reanimator is loosely based on, um, the H.P. Lovecraft story, uh, Herbert West Reanimator, but obviously these movies took it in a much more over-the-top, more gory, um, more comedic, uh, more humorous direction. You know, they're only kind of loosely based on it. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a more faithful adaption someday, maybe just, like, maybe it's, like, an animated movie or maybe, like, a, you know, like a TV miniseries or something, but I still think they'll, they won't be able to top this. It's just, this just awesome. These movies just rule. And I think this is a great follow-up. Yeah, there's, uh, there's Dr. Hill right there, his head. Um, and yeah, it's really cool to see these characters returning. I love Herbert West. I love Dan Kane, And, uh, Dr. Hill's a great villain, too. He was awesome and antagonist. And even though, uh, you know, Herbert West kind of has, like, a lot of antagonistic properties, you know, he, he'll do anything to get his way and, uh, get what he wants. And he is kind of homicidal, too. He does kill people. Um, you know, to further his career, and he's really obsessed, and, like, he, he puts his, um, his work and his inventions, you know, his love of science before anything, like, he doesn't really value human life all that much, so, um, he's a very interesting, complex character, very funny, too, I've always loved Jeffrey Combs, always been a fan of him, he's, uh, he's right up there, he's probably my top ten favorite actors, for sure, he's, he's great in all these horror movies, he's awesome in everything he's in, um, he could make a bad movie, um, way more watchable than it should be. Um, but anyway, yeah, these movies are no exception. These movies are excellent, and he's just, he's he's a huge part of that. Um, and yeah, Bruce Abbott's good, too. Uh, he was a lot more muscular and built in this movie, and I think he had a, gave a slightly better performance. In this one, he seems a little more focused. It is kind of weird that he's still, like, at uh, Herbert West's side after, like, he was responsible for his girlfriend's death, but I guess he believes that he's the only one who can bring her back, so to speak. Um, you know, and then, of course, when she does come back, like, in this new weird body, it's kind of a uh, grotesque... Uh, abomination it's a, it's a you know really horrid creation they kind of reject her right away it's kind of a sad emotional ending too i won't give it away you know but um yeah there's also this cop that's after them who yeah, he dies and he becomes reanimated and they have a few of like the zombies from the first film left over and like you don't really recognize them they don't look like the same zombies but then again uh dr hill resurrected like an entire morgue full of corpses so you know we didn't really get a good look at all of them so you can you can you can believe it's 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 um it's believable i can you know i can i can buy it uh, the these people were from the first movie. Um, so yeah, just really gory scenes. This one might be even more gory and more over top than the original film. And it definitely takes, I definitely love the direction that it takes it in. I thought it was a, definitely a welcome addition. Um, yeah, great to see these characters um, return and like have ex more expanded roles and see like what, where they went um, after the first film. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, great sequel. I highly recommend it. Um, again, Reanimator should have been in my top ten list. I don't know why it slipped in my mind. I don't know why, why I forgot it. Should have been you know, right up there with Evil Dead Two and Fright Night and Return of the Living Dead. And I love really, I love fun, entertaining, 
um, 80s movies with like a lot of gore and like a lot of laughs, you know, and then like really outrageous, fun moments. Those are my favorite type of films. As much as I love um, highly effective and suspenseful masterpieces that um, compel you and they're very insightful, like, you know, the original Halloween, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, you know, Exorcist, Poltergeist, Rosemary's Baby, The Omen. Um, those are great too in a different way, and those are obviously technically better movies. Um, but I enjoy movies like like these way more. Like you know, they're just more fun and like they're just for, more you know personal enjoy. If I got a bunch of friends together, I'd rather watch these and have a good time and have a blast. Um, and you know, and, as I said, I love movies that'll like change your life and make you a better person. Like the ones I mentioned, you know, stuff like Silence of the Lambs and Seven, stuff like that. But, <laughs> but I think I'm always gonna give these movies the edge because they're just so damn fun. And I. Feel I feel like that's the point of movies. That's the point of cinema, cinema to entertain you and to kind of escape from reality. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, kind of ranting like I always do, rambling. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, definitely check out Reanimator. It's it's one of my horror favorites. It's a classic. Um, I love it so much. Um, and definitely check out the sequel, Bride of Reanimator. I think there's also Beyond Reanimator, um, which is the third movie that came a lot later. That was like in the early two thousands. Uh, you know, it came way after these movies, which were in the 80s. Uh, I think it was definitely a great follow-up. Um, Bruce Abbott doesn't return as Dan Kane. Um, luckily, Jeffrey Combs returns. Uh, he's the only um, returning cast member, um, and rightfully so. He's the main character, and he's still awesome as Herbert West. The guy's barely aged at all, and he's still, he's still got it. He can still perform that role in his sleep, and it's so fun seeing him. It's a prison setting, too. But anyway, I'll give that, re that movie its own review eventually. It might not be the next video I do, um, or even the next few, but I'll get to it soon. I'll let you guys know what I think. Um, I'd love to see a fourth film. They were in talks to do, um, a house of reanimator, um, back when, like, I think this was back when, like, George Bush, um, was president. So this is kind of a while back. Um, you know, like, it was to take place in the White House. It was going to have, like, dead presidents and vice presidents and, like, other politicians and people who are high in power dying and coming back as zombies. How fun would that have been? It taking place in the White House, like, in Washington, D.C. That would have been really cool. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see House of Reanimator. You know, it'd also go with, like, the theme of, like, naming their titles after, you know, Frankenstein film, you know, Bride of Reanimator, obviously. Um, I think that'd been a lot of fun. So, yeah, I'd love to see a fourth film. They should definitely do another Reanimator. Um, Jeffrey Combs has to return. I'd love them to bring back Bruce Abbott, if possible, returning as Dan Kane. That'd be cool. I mean, it's not going to be a deal-breaker if he doesn't come back for me, but I'd really love to see it and understand if they can't do it. But just make a fourth film already, please. I will I will, I will be the first one in line to go see that, because it'll be awesome. Because I love these movies. They hold a special place in my heart. And again, it should have been in my top ten list. And just go ahead and consider it as, you know, something I forgot and wasn't thinking right. I, I, I really, I really threw that video together and didn't put much thought into it. I did it way too quickly and way too abruptly. I'd already done like five video videos that day and I was like tired and wasn't thinking clearly. This belongs there. And, um, and this is a great sequel. All right, guys. Well, I think I've just about covered it. Um, yeah, definitely check out those movies you haven't already and give us a part four, please. Um, but yeah. Jeffrey Combs, Herbert West, the reanimator, great character, great performance, um, very fun to watch, great story, um, and also check out, you know, if you can, check out the H.P. Lovecraft story, too, it's really cool, uh, Lovecraft was, you know, of course, a genius, so I don't even think I need to explain that. Alright guys, I'm Hellhound, and, um, until next time.